G'day, how's it going? I uh, wanted to have a quick chat to you about um, a little bit around psychology, free will, and the dynamics of how stress really manipulates our perception of these things. Um, now, the ideas that we have around the human mind, there's two real general ways of thinking about it. And one base school of reasoning is that there is consciousness produced by the brain. And then the other leading theory in neurology is, is that uh, consciousness is received by the brain and then facilitates the brain's movements and functions. So I particularly, especially when you look at the larger aspects of unified field theories um, and other aspects within quantum mechanics and other things like this, it's pretty quickly to see that um, our base interpretations of the human mind and that once something stops being matter, that it disappears, is kind of made redundant by that whole entire established um, leg of science. So even after our brain dissembles, it's still evident that there's something there, exactly what that is. We wouldn't want to try to put names to it because it's no longer matter and words are associated with defined things in our reality, not insubstantial, ineffable things. But the mind, I particularly really love working with people in these aspects because the evidence and the show of how it helps people is just phenomenally soul lifting <laughs> it's really good um, when we have a discussion of free will and I hear it all the time I love listening to these although uh, it's hard to find some that talk about new things um, <laughs> when you when you get into some of these discussions, there's a few considerations that need to happen. First of all, what is thought? Who is thought? Are you thinking thought or is thought thinking you? Are you thinking your brain or is your brain creating you? If your brain is creating you, then you're not thinking thought. Your thought is creating you and all of these other dynamics and things like this. But to start simply, <clears throat> we have to recognize that there's a, a, a time delay between thought process stimuli response and reaction right reaction is usually considered to be a faster facilitated method than what we might call response which is kind of engaging the conscious mental faculties as opposed to going Quah! and reacting to something um when you have the desire to figure out whether or not you're making your thoughts you have to first realize that before you think the thought that you're thinking, your body has had to take that thought, put it through a whole bunch of processes, interpret it several times, and then spit out conclusions of it. It doesn't exactly remain in its original form through this entire process. So it not only isn't the same when it comes in as to when you feel it go out in a form of thought, oh, I thought something, but there's also a time delay. Which means that despite the fact that you might think that you're delay you, that you are making the statement, the statement was already made up to some say two, three seconds before you actually begin to open your mouth and speak the words. Now that's neurology. If you talk about your heart, you go right up to six, seven minutes, depending on some conversations that you go. It could be hours, days, weeks, and months with your heart. But your heart doesn't speak much English. Mine does. And so your mind is always there going blah, 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 blah. I mean language, English, whatever you speak. It's always there going da 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 because it's an interpretation mechanism of data from your senses and it gets data from your senses and it interprets them. So it's got to go through a process of interpret we're not aware of the interpretation process. We get the final product. And that's what I said. Alright? But that is not the entire process. So you think that you go and that's it, but there's a whole bunch of things that are pumping and chumping and chomping and shooving and moving and doing all sorts of random things that, you know, you probably just make up as many imaginary words as you want for. Um, to emphasize the gravity of how many things there are going on, not because everything going on is imaginary. <laughs> When we really think about 
how thought comes about, we start to really begin to notice small nuances about the circumstance, like that it's not what we're thinking that creates a thought, it's not what we want to think that creates a thought. It's more like the thoughts come out of the experiences that we're having or the feelings that we're going through or the moods or behaviours that we're embodying. These sort of create the arena of what the mind is going to go, we'll choose this thought, and then you go, so if you're in a state of negativity, if you're in a state of stress and you come into a new circumstance and you're looking at data in that new circumstance, things that are happening in your environment and you go, well, this is happening in my environment. And then one of the parts of the process is I'm going to color it with the immediate experiences or emotions that I'm experiencing. And so Oh, my child is drawing me a picture, but I'm stressed and busy and occupied at the moment. So I don't have time for that. Oh, that's good. But I've seen this thing a hundred times. You're not actually doing it. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Now, okay, dad's got to go back to work. Instead of actually taking the time and going, Oh, I see how you've grown in this. And I see these little nuances that you're doing here. Congratulations. Keep going. Just a couple more connected seconds in a moment is hugely impactful in how you allow your thoughts to take shape. It's the difference between an immediate reaction and a more cultivated, harmonious expression of yourself. As long as you're not in a state of survivability, in which case it's gonna be a, well, this is all I've got because I'm trying to fucking survive. (laughs) So it's usually aggressive and attacking and um, other things like that. But what I really love about this whole discussion is how easy a lot of this becomes once you get the essence of what we're talking about here, that your thoughts are not things that you think. Your thoughts are things that happen inside your mind. This is the base premise of all the things to do with what we call meditation. One of the biggest teachings of meditation is the passive effect that will happen when your mind begins to do it enough that you begin to see that all of your experiences, beings, thoughts and processes, emotions and you is in fact things that are happening in in front of you and you're observing these things and they're not you. That's when the enlightenment happens and you become of the world, in the world but not of the world because you're still interacting with things, you're still doing all of the things that humans do but there's a layer of difference between you and this thing that is you behind this thing that people think is you and that connected space there is allowing you to either use the noise inside of your head to try to communicate and interact with the things around you or to allow your connection to come through and then use that to make the connections around you with the difference between the two of them is whether you're stressed or not I mean stress in a very loose definition. I don't mean like, <laughs> I mean like, fuck, I've got to go to work. Oh, I don't have time for this. And oh, fuck, I just spilled my coffee. Um, you know, everyday life. We call it nowadays in our society. The stresses incurred on today's members of today's society cause grand impact on the human psychology unit that we call a brain. One of the things that we really enjoy doing in order to be able to come back to our place and to bring our peace back together again is to unify ourselves. And there's multiple ways that we unify ourselves. One of them that most people are aware of is the brain and the heart. Unifying the brain frequency with the heart frequency This was perfect because it's exactly what everybody needs. Few people realize that very many can't do that because before they can even think about unifying this with anything, they've first got to unify this because this is split in the middle, straight down the hemisphere. Left, right, polar, left, masculinity, femininity, up and down, you know, poverty and abundance, um, the elites and the poor, the suppression or the freedom it's the for the false dichotomies that we all get lost in these are the ego attachments is false dichotomy when you're when your brain is separated 
that you take everything as a unified concept and split it in two. It's not split in two automatically. You do that in your perception. And then you pit those two things against each other, hoping that you will side with the one that will survive. That one has to live and one has to die. That, oh no, now that there's black, we, we have to make sure that the white beats the black, that the light wins over the dark. But before you separated the light and the dark, they were both capital L light, unified in their existence. Your perception of that is what is causing you to perceive something that's not 100% connected there. Unifying brain concepts, there's many of them out there. Super learning capacities and techniques to bring the brain back into cohesion to ensure that the body and the entire body, body, mind, heart, gut, all three massive areas of brain power. Yes, there are shit tons of neurons in your gut, amongst many other things. These three main brains that you have here, these three need to work in conjunction, not just your heart, not just your brain. Your heart also needs to be unified in its aspect. Your gut also needs to be unified in its aspect. Your mind also needs to be. And then when it is, then you could begin the unification down the entire corpus of your system. Your body corpus. Okay? So, I really love this sort of stuff. Because I see how amazing the effect is on people. And it's profound. It is profound. It's also very, very private for a lot of people. So a lot of people who go through the process don't want to talk about it in public because they're too busy loving the ability to continue in their, their life. And I encourage people to do that, to focus on what is important to them. But one thing that I absolutely love that I have here for every single person on the face of the planet. And this was given to me by some beings that were floating around while I was out asking for motivation one day. It's a very common concepts of being able to ask for motivation or ideas or creativity. Send me a sign. Show me what I am meant to do. Blah, 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 blah. All of these different ways that we do it. One day, oh, I got one. And it was one that blew my fucking mind. One that creates a connected ring of interconnected everything. And then expounds and complements itself. Appreciates itself. And as it appreciates itself, it loves itself more and continues to appreciate. To gain in value. To gain in worth. Or to gain in harmony and synchronicity and alignment. It's commonly what we call healing this is a phenomenal thing that I, I want to talk a lot more about because you don't do anything you sign up you pay the entry ticket you walk in that's it you don't even need to sit down or rest or read a report or do anything you can do as much or as little in this process as you want I'm here to help you in the process so if you want to engage it yeah we could talk about it we could go real deep into your experiences and what it's all like for you if you're busy and you've got nine to five and you're running about looking after kids and grandkids at the same time while juggling fam other family responsibilities you know christmas is coming up all these other things then what you want is something that's fast effective and will get you reconnected to the core of you so that way you can find your own empowerment again and that's the core aspect of this entire thing is it's not me doing this to you it's you doing this to you and it's you learning how to continue doing this to yourself so that way you don't need to keep coming back for more ever and just in case you're having a bad fucking week the most epic part about this is that each person who goes into this becomes part of the network of healing and because they're a part of the network of healing each new person that comes into it realigns and reheals everybody else within the crystalline grid that we're forming so we have a bunch of crystals that are aligned and some of them are living a rough life and they go oh, I'm gonna tilt a little bit this way because of some shade and shadows that I had to encounter 
And then somebody else comes in and goes, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to be healed. And they heal everybody within the group at the same time in their entry within the group. And then everybody within the group accentuates and multiplies this individual's healing at the, at the same time. So the more people that get on board with this, the more fucking crazy it's going to get. And it already is. It's absolutely insane. One-time fee, lifetime healing. As long as I live, I will be your healer for the rest of my life and you won't even need to do anything. You won't even need to know about it. It's fantastic. And really enjoyable. And I'm sorry, I should get off my butt and make a really awesome feedback website with all of the feedback that I get. So that way all of you can go, oh my god! Because that's what I do every time I get the feedback. I go, oh my god! <laughs> it's just really cool. Thank you for being here with me and letting me take part in your journey too. I appreciate you all and I hope in any way, shape or form during this video or any other video that I do or any posts that I have that you can gain something for your own benefit in helping yourself move forward where you are regardless of your choice of actions. But if you are interested in jumping on there's a bit of a secret and I haven't put it in any of the signage yet because I like to do things differently. But the discount code is 30%. 30PERCENT. -E -E All capital letters. 30, like the numerology, 30, and then the word percent. No space. 30PERCENT. -E All capital letters. 30% off. It's only available for two weeks from the launch of this video. Congratulations, everybody who is already taking part in this. Seriously, you, you really wouldn't believe some of the stories till you experience it. And you'll be like, oh my God, that's amazing because I had this happen to me. And then everybody just loves it. <laughs> it's exponentially expounding. <laughs> Love to you all. Website's in the description.